This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, on the Exxon TV show, coming soon to screens of all sizes. On the Exxon TV show, we'll investigate UFOs, ghosts, alien abductions, demonic possession, psychic phenomenon, angels, lake monsters, Bigfoot, unsolved mysteries, and all subject matter from within the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology and much, much more. The Exxon TV Show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, www.xzonetv.com, is a Relmar McConnell Media Company and Airplay Media Production. Unwilling to be the government's deadly assassin, gifted psychic Kahara Mitchell went AWOL and ended up buried under rubble in the wake of a great tsunami. She regained consciousness far from Earth on the medical ship of a Dagaronian intergalactic fleet. Has she been rescued or abducted by aliens? The Chalice of Carrie, Kahira O'Donnell's latest paranormal science fiction romance, is the passionate story of an Earth woman and her destined mates, twin kings from another galaxy. Kahara uses her gifts fighting alongside Lords Rom and Ra in a war that will determine the destiny of galaxies. The Chalice of Kari by Kahira O'Donnell is now available at kahiraodonnell.com or at amazon.com. where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll-free, 800-610-7035. My email address is exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And you can listen to the Exxon 724 365 at com. You know, one of the greatest joys about doing this job is I get to talk to the most fascinating people in the world. However, it's very rare that I get to talk to someone who is truly amazing, just not by my standards, but by standards of millions of people who have had the opportunity of watching this gentleman on TV, listening to him do lectures, seeing him perform. It's just amazing. And joining me now from his home in New Jersey is the one, the only, the amazing Kresgen. And Kresgen, welcome to the Exxon. It's truly an honor and a pleasure having you here. I'm a longtime fan of yours, and in fact, you are one of my inspirations on why I do what I do today. I remember watching you on CFCF TV in Montreal, and the show that I remember was you had this revolving platform, and you had canisters. Oh, of yes. water and canisters of acid. Acid, yes. And you yes. were able, blindfolded, if I remember correctly. I was blindfolded. To determine which 
was the acid and which was the water, and you were placing your hand in it. And pouring it over my hand. Rob, yeah. it's good to, by the way, I've got to tell everybody, I feel like I knew you, because just in talking to you for five minutes, you have such a, a commu- quality of genuine communication. I happen, to, I happen to say that without affectation, because there's a word I, I mentioned to you earlier, and a lot of folks who follow me through the years, by the way, I feel that I am Canadian because mm-hmm. I spent much of my life in Canada. Yeah. My my series, The Amazing World of Creskin, started CT, at a CTV network yeah. in Canada, mm-hmm. and then after, by the second year, it went international. Do you know? You know, Rob, I, and I don't mean it egotistically, but I, I mean it because I so loved my second home, Canada. The first two years of this series. It was the second highest rate of program in the country. There was a, something before it called hockey, which yeah. nothing ever becomes number <laughs> one. You know that, Rob. That's yeah. right. But That's, you know, you talk about the, you talk about that particular test, and uh, I'm going to tell your listeners an inside story, which they're really unaware of. Um, uh, a man followed me mm-hmm. as I toured in the uh, 60s, he followed me around the United States, and I didn't even know he was in my audiences, and I, I, colleges, what have you, and so forth. It turns out he was from the CTV network, and after maybe the 40th or 50th city he was in, he said, you know, I was assigned by my people to watch your performances, and we're interested in doing a, a television series and what have you. I won't go mm-hmm. into it, but I will tell you that the head of the network made a very dramatic rule because in the, uh, one, at one of, during one of the shows, something went wrong, and the test just didn't work. Hmm. And they brought me in one day to a meeting uh, at the executive office, and there were, I don't want to curse, I don't want to appear in bad taste, but there was a negative quality in the office, because in the office were six attorneys. Wow. Now, I, I'm nothing against attorneys. I just wish that most of them had been the Titanic. And anyway, all kidding aside... <laughs> They said to me, they said, Kreskin, would you, you did something last week which didn't succeed. Mm-hmm. Would you consider doing, when this happens on a show, your half hour series, would you consider doing those segments over? And I got perturbed. I tried not to be temperamental. I walked out and I walked down a long hallway mm-hmm. and called my manager in Eastern Pennsylvania. And I said, I don't know what to say. The program's got to have a life of spontaneity. We all know that shows are taped. And this is the way I keep the credibility. Well, two weeks later, I found an edict was handed down by the head of the network for the rest of my career. And the order was they were never to touch the program. Never. It's almost, I take to tell people in the yeah, States, yeah. I said, never, they never came in and commented on what I did. They let it go the way it did. Because I think that's part of what kept the show so alive that people realized it was happening with a sense of spontaneity in that test which by the way the second time i did it was in london because we we traveled the world after the first two years i did two years in london right, uh, right. that one of those containers had acid and the containers were rotated on a pedestal and my i was legitimately blindfolded mm-hmm. and i want you to know that when there were I was reaching forward, taking a container and pouring it over my hand. And when there were only two containers left, I stopped. And I said, I think we've got to end here. I just can't go on. And Monty Morgan, who had worked with a gentleman by the name of Jack Parr for many years in television, oh, said, wow. Kristen, you had to stop there. He was such a nervous wreck. We didn't want you to take a further chance. But you know... That came the realism of the show. And That's you, right. You, when you said that to me earlier. That's why you're the amazing Kreskin. I never intended. By the way, I never intended to use the term amazing. There was a man in the States by the name of Johnny Carson. Yes. And, uh, I did 88 shows with him. And he was very, he was very, very loyal to me and very protective of me mm-hmm. and the credibility of what I did. And I would be leaving. I had the one named Kreskin, legal name. I'd be leaving uh, going on an airplane or leaving the plane. And as I was passing by in airports, people coming on the other way would say, hi, amazing, hi, amazing. I'd say my room manager, see, that's pretty nice that they feel that way of what I do. And then I find out Fred DeCordova, who was Carson's producer, says, Preston, for God's sakes, 
look at Johnny the night before you're on. I say, well, I don't always get it. He says, you know, you got a reason for watching. I would turn on Carson and Johnny would be saying to Ed McMahon's announcer, hey, you know, the last time Kreskin was on, he was only 90% amazing. And Ed McMahon would say, no, no, it was 95% amazing. And they made a routine, and that's how I got the name amazing. Wow. <laughs> you know, I, I understand, Kreskin, that you started way back because you were inspired by a a cartoon, The Great Mandrake. Well, I want to tell you the story about Please. that. Please. Uh, I, uh, I, I, when I was uh, five years old, I'm Polish Italian, and I was visiting my relatives in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, on the Polish side, and this young man, who looked like an older man, handed me this comic. And it was an action comic, which, of course, I prized today. I opened it, and it had this cartoon character whose name was Mandrake. It was Mandrake the Magician mm -hmm. by Lee Falk. Lee Falk had another successful comic called The Phantom. And in World War II, the most popular comic in Italy, when, it would, when they were part of the Axis power, and uh, with, with uh, Mussolini, they were enemies. The most popular comic was a comic called Mandrake. Well, it was so popular that Mussolini says, well, we're not going to ban this. Let's have someone Italian rewrite some of the script. We'll keep the cartoon. And the man who rewrote Mandrake... <laughs> And very few people know it today, was the great director Fellini. Wow. And Fellini was so passionate about the comic that one of the great failures of his great career as a movie producer mm -hmm. was he never did a movie called Mandrake he wanted to, but he says, how can you do a movie? This man was not a magician. He had hypnotic powers. He read people's thoughts. To do things like that in a movie, you have to use trick photography. And he considered it one of the failures of his life never to do Mandrake. Well, years later, I, I am performing, and Mandrake's my uh, hero, and uh, uh, Lee Falk is being honored in New Jersey, uh, in New York at Sardi's Restaurant, which is a very famous show business restaurant in, in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And they're having a seminar with all professors and students of cartoons and honoring Lee Falk. And I have to tell you, this is one of the proudest stories of my life. They said, Kreskin, would you like to meet Lee Falk? I said, I'd be honored. I get there. There's hundreds of these men and women from universities. Mm -hmm. I go over to Lee Falk. He says, I know who you are, Kreskin. We shake hands. And he now does a Q&E. And into the second hour, he says to the audience, I want to stop right now. He says, since I've been writing Mandrakes in 1935, there's only one person who's come close to being this comic character in real life, it's Kreskin. Can you imagine how I felt? Robert sure. was one of the most moving moments of my entire life. After doing what you do, after <laughs> all these years, Kreskin, in your opinion, sir, what has been the pinnacle of your career as the great Kreskin, the amazing Kreskin, Kreskin, the Kreskin that we all love, who who pointed many of us into the direction of trying to understand ESP, mentalism, psychic phenomena. You know, you know, uh, I say this to university audiences because I've, I've done over a thousand university shows wow. in the United States and Canada, and I say something to students which is becoming lost today in our culture because I'm very sorry to say this. We don't listen to each other as much as we oh, once did. Isn't that we, true, don't, yeah. we don't hear each other as much anymore. We have a box in front of us where yeah. people are sometimes sitting at a restaurant. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not knocking electronics. It's mm -hmm. been actually mm -hmm. a revolution. But there's times when you much touch someone, whether you're in love or you're interested in them, by just giving them your feeling and your attention. And I always say to college students, I say to young kids, one thing in life was a key in my entire life. Don't ever stop asking questions. In all my life, I've listened to what people said, but not by just what they've said, but by what they're thinking. Because my whole voyage in life has been in tuning in how other people think and feel. And there's a word that described a hero of mine years ago which psychologists did not understand him. They said, this man on radio and television in 1940 and 45 makes us feel like he's tuning in on us. There's a word called sympathy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a new word was created. It was called empathy. 
And empathy is to feel the way someone else feels. And that was the feeling that Arthur Godfrey created. And that's become the voyage in my life, even as an entertainer. In my performances, in all my shows, in my live concerts, whether they're in theaters, uh, the, the, two, the, the 18 days last October, I was headlining at your, your famous uh, uh, state uh, fair that's in Toronto. It's, uh, uh, there's, there's other letters too. Like sure, it's the c and and uh, I did, by the way, outdoors, of course, we had thousands in our audience and people can, do you know, do you know, Rob, in, in 18 days, I did exactly 39 shows on stage. Wow. And people told me, that, how do you, but anyway, in my programs, I turn my check over to my audience mm -hmm. and I am escorted from the theater now, outdoors, whether it's. Uh, the fair, like in Toronto, or a state fair, state fair, a right. auto, say, uh, they'll take me into a. They brought a, a a trailer on which all the walls were covered, and I was escorted into it by a committee from the audience and some police. And door was closed. While I am out of sight, my check is hidden anywhere within the theater audience, mm -hmm. anywhere within the state fair, you name it. And when it's hidden. The committee comes back and gets me, brings me to the stage, and the people who, who took me into this vehicle or took me out of the theater point out he did not see anything, he didn't hear anything. There's no communications verbally. There's no questions asked. I simply admonish my committee to think of what they've done. And Rob, if I don't find my check, literally physically find my fee, mm -hmm. I forfeit it. Wow. It is returned to the organization that booked me, and the show is for free and for fun. And people always say, have you ever failed? Yes, I have. I failed nine times. You can say, well, that's not many out of 6,000 times. Not many. New Zealand, which I've toured many times. My first tour there, the first night, was at a Coliseum. I don't know how many thousands. I failed. And after the show, the press that was there came up to me after I changed my clothes and came back in the theater. They said, Chris, can we know how you must feel? Would you mind, would you consider a press conference tomorrow? I said, of course, I'm, I'm professional. I Obviously, I'm annoyed with what happened, but that's my fault. Right. The press conference was over 100 people on the steps of the theater at 9 o'clock the next morning. Not because I failed to find my check, because when I failed, I lost in one night 51 thousand dollars oh my gosh but on the other side of the coin the stories of where it's been hidden one drama critic in pittsburgh pennsylvania when he reviewed me after seeing me three nights opening night at a theater he says this coming to see this is like watching a murder mystery in a play but the solution is different every night at the university of illinois i walked into the Gymnasium, 8,000 people. It was a family weekend, so there were parents and, and, and students. I walked down this congested aisle because some are sitting in chairs on the tarp on the main floor. Others are in bleachers. But I, mm -hmm. I found myself walking between people. I come up to this elderly, classy-looking gentleman. I had him stand. And I said, sir, uh, this is a, I feel terrible to say this to you. Would you open your mouth? Well, Rob, I felt like a piece of crap. There was no check. I walked away. I walked 10 feet away. And something pulled me back. Something was telling me to come back. Mm -hmm. Came back to him. I said, sir, would you just stand again? If I embarrass you, would you just sit down? And I apologize now. Did you open your mouth again? I looked him in the eye and I said, does this have to do with the roof of your mouth? To this day, I will never forget. He reached in his mouth, took out his upper plates, and had in me my check. Oh, my gosh. It's been hidden oh, in pieces that you cannot even imagine. At one university, I walked through an audience. I picked a man in a suit right. and walked him to the stage. I said something about a gun. I thought, this is stupid. He's not a policeman. I have no gun on me. Mm -hmm. Open his jacket. He was a plain clothesman, Rob, and he had a shoulder holster on. And I would never do this. I'm, I'm not stupid. I'm not asinine. I took the gun out of his holster. Mm -hmm. Turned the barrel towards my eyes. They had taken tweezers and fed the check piece, paste piece down the barrel of the gun. So you can see that around the world, this has yeah. become an adventure. 
The Alien Cosmic Expo will be held in Bradford, Ontario, June 26, 27, 28, and will feature 24 internationally acclaimed experts and researchers of UFOs, crop circles, alien abductions, and much more in this three-day 2015 summer Canadian event. Experts in the field of extraterrestrials and alien encounters, out-of-body experiences, past life regression, soul reading, psychic and mediumship will all be presented with professionalism, integrity, and credibility, making the Alien Cosmic Expo the largest event of its kind in Canada for 2015. The Exhibitor Hall will feature a spectacular lineup of gifted mediums, psychics, astrologers, channelers, aura photography, healers, as well as books, DVDs, alternative health products, crystals, jewelry, and much more completing the venue with something for everyone. For all information and to purchase your tickets for the Alien Cosmic Expo, go to www.aliencosmicexpo.com. That's www.aliencosmicexpo.com. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God, It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, on the Exxon TV show, coming soon to screens of all sizes. On the Exxon TV show, we'll investigate UFOs, ghosts, alien abductions, demonic possession, psychic phenomenon, angels, lake monsters, Bigfoot, unsolved mysteries, and all subject matter from within the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology and much, much more. The Exxon TV Show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, www.xzonetv.com, is a Relmar McConnell Media Company and Airplay Media Production. All right, let me ask you this, Kreskin. In today's world, the paranormal, parapsychology, is really big. Now, I I know, sir, that what you do is not related to being a psychic. I know it's not related to to any of the far out fringes. As I, I, so- believe, I believe many of these people are gifted, and I believe right. I have a gift, but I don't have the. I, I if someone is asking me where they're going to be mm-hmm. next, uh, let's say they're going to ask where they're going to be June twenty first, right. If they knew under the right conditions, I could tell them. If they didn't know, I'm not a I'm not a fortune teller. Right. I had, but, but it taps. It tap. But you said something, and I am very uh, proud about this. You don't mind if I plug something in my life? Uh, Please. At the same time? <laughs> Please do. <laughs> the the, the uh, internet the site that's now been we now have called the Amazing Kreskin Supernatural Natural Dating Society. It's not a sex society thing. I am. Like a kid right now, Rob. I, I'm telling you right now, I am like, my, my life has been so adventurous. Uh, people came to me a year ago and said, let's put together, we'll call it the, Americ- the Amazing Kreskin Supernatural Dating Society. I love that. You notice yeah. what you said. There is such tremendous interest around the world today, mm-hmm. whether it's UFOs, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, prenatal uh, experiences, uh, ghosts. I'm not saying I believe in all of this, but mm-hmm. I believe there's something phenomenal there yeah. that reflects yeah. this. But there's another factor. And sociologists are saying, and a psychologist 
has just a psychologist wrote me. I'm very proud of his remark. He said, Kreskin, something like this is overdue. Before the Civil War in the United States, before World War I, before World War II, and now, mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. every great war, there's been incredible interest in the paranormal. And, 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 and sociologists or researchers say, my God, we did not realize this powder. Probably because the, 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 the citizen every day is becoming dissatisfied mm -hmm. with perhaps mm -hmm. what leaders are offering, what is being, and they're looking for other answers. And this reflects a tremendous, gigantic interest. And it's, it's not just in Canada or the United States. It's worldwide. No, it's worldwide. It's everywhere. It's in my, in four and a half weeks, Rob, the, the amazing Kreskin Supernatural Dating Society has become international. It is mind boggling. And you know, I, people don't, shouldn't misunderstand me. I, I don't have the answers to everything, but by just searching, people can now find a common bond with another person. Let me tell you one of the most incredible, uh, in experiences that people are recounting. We would call it, you would call it uh, crises telepathic experiences. And you take any large family in Canada, in Italy, my home area, or what, what have you, you get a large family. Someone in that family, mother, dad, uncle, has had an experience. Yep. So they suddenly sensed a loved one was in trouble. I tell you the story here in New Jersey, the Newark Star Ledger. The, 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 the reporter came to me and says, Kreskin, you have no idea how it hits me. Something happened a few years ago. A young man in Germany was flying home to surprise his parents. He was in the U.S. Army. The plane took off. Tragically, it crashed, and he was killed within minutes after the takeoff. But it had gotten into the ledger on page three or four that that next morning, and the editor, bless his soul, said to this gentleman, we're not far from Elizabeth. Why don't you get your ass into a car Go to the family before they see this and just just make them aware. He says, I can't just picture they're going to open a newspaper and hear they didn't even know the son was on the way home. The gentleman tells me, Rob, and you know what's going to, I'm going to be telling you. He drives to Elizabeth, New Jersey. And he says, Kreskin, he says, I covered everything. I didn't know how I was going to handle this. I get to this quiet neighborhood. I go up the walk. It's now 10 minutes after 7. I knock on the door. Lady answers the door. As soon as she opens the door, she starts screaming hysterically and saying, you don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell me. Five, four or five hours ago, I saw my son in flames in a dream. Oh this phenomena, as you have recounted with all your shows, happens worldwide. It does. It, does. it, it certainly does. And I, I believe, Kreskin, it's because of, of people like you and the professionalism that you bring forth in everything that you do, people are no longer afraid to share these experiences because people like you, people like me, who are serious and really care about people, yes. we both hold their, them in the palm of our hand and, and we say, you can trust us. Tell yeah. us your story. We're not going to let anybody laugh at you. We're not going to let anybody sneer you. You're going so to you be said safe. something very significant. You said you gave them a setting, a table, a conference room where they could communicate with some respect. Whether whether there are different theories to what happened or what have you, that they can they can communicate with an intelligence and warmth and compassion, and that's what so many many people who have incredible experiences mm -hmm. tell. We know my degrees in psychology. Uh, Rob, I've never bragged about it because I have never met more whacked out people in my life than psychiatrists. <laughs> and I have friends who are in the field of psychiatrists, but the highest mental illness in all the professions in the Western world happens to be in the field of psychiatry. This is not criticism. The point of the matter is we do not know all the answers, and that's what makes life so such an absolute adventure. That is so true. And if somebody comes on my show and tells me about an experience that they've had, whether it is with a UFO, an extraterrestrial, a ghost, Bigfoot, uh, or any other phenomenon. I was not there. I cannot say to them with any degree of certainty, you're wrong. It never, never happened. You can never say, by the way, I, uh, I have to tell you because uh, 
now now coverage of UFO phenomena has become more extensive. Years ago, mm -hmm. the Learning mm -hmm. Channel here in the States had a week on UFOs, and they had me edit and uh, be the producer of, of two of, two of the particular ones. But in the years now, it's it's not so bad. But you you know this years ago, folks, when you were an airplane. And I used to be able to sit in the cockpit with pilots now because of all the, the security and so forth. You can't do that on, on commercial airlines. Right, but right. they would recount stories. They could not tell these stories publicly because they'd lose their job as, yeah. a, as a pilot. They'd be out of work suddenly. But the stories they would tell me were absolutely fascinating. And, and, and I mentioned Arthur Garf. I remember um, uh, a lot of performers would say, Kreskin, the pilots would sit and say, why can't I explain this to someone? Now, people ask me, I, I don't know about, uh, I don't know about uh, landings and, and uh, occupations mm -hmm. of people from outer plants, but I will say this. God forbid, Rob, God forbid we're the only intelligence in the universe. God, if that were the case, we're in trouble. You Big know time. there's greater intelligence out there, Rob. <laughs> Many times I think, Kreskin, that there is a sign on the back side of the moon or the dark side of the moon that says, Earth ahead, turn back here. <laughs> I, I, that that to me that to me is a very intriguing situation. You know, I can I can I mention, and this is this is out of left field, but I got to share this with you, please, only because I heard from him recently, and and uh, oh, let me let me just say this to all all my all your listeners and people who follow me through the years. I don't brag about this. I don't celebrate things like this, but. This year, and it was very special, a party was held in New York in celebration of, of my birthday. And I, I don't celebrate birthdays. When about 120 people came from the media and everything else, it was my 80th birthday. And uh, so on January 12th, we celebrated 80th birthday. But I have to tell you, in the same breath, last year, uh, one of the major airlines uh, did a, had someone follow me around the on their on their particular flight, the airline industry is estimated I've flown a little over three million miles, Whoa. a little over three million, and not last year, but the year before. Now I'm not talking about just shows; I'm talking about radio, television, mm -hmm. like with you, and and concerts. And I swear to God, as God is my judge, in one year we counted all of the interviews, all the appearances. And that year I did in one year around the world, 364 appearances, exactly. Wow. 364. <laughs> so my life's an adventure. I mean, people say, uh, do, you, do you tire? Are you a workaholic? I'm not a workaholic. Like you, Rob, this is a passion. It is. It is. I am so damn blessed that how people say, what would I do if I weren't doing this for a living? I would do this on the streets for nothing. Because this is what I, this is my, my love. And the people whose lives I've touched and met from, you know, from, from people in royalty to what have you, to, to your audiences who are really my bond. I have to tell you each night when I, of course, I will tell you this. If you watch me in a two and a half hour concert, there is great relief at a certain point. When I got that damn check back in my hand, Rob, <laughs> I can breathe again easily. <laughs> I can I can appreciate that. Remember a man by the name of Robin Leach years ago? He had oh, a show called The Lifestyle of the Rich and the Famous. Definitely, definitely. The Lives of the Rich and the Famous. Tonight we're going to be. Yeah. How, did you, how did you imitate his voice so perfectly? Well, I don't anyway, know. He, he saw about the, you know, my, my uh, new, new thing, the, uh, the, the super, supernatural dating, uh, mm -hmm. crazy supernatural dating society. He says, I want to give you something that you did on my show. He came to my house. He, he went to a museum. Where all his memorabilia is. What a what a beautiful thing he did. It took a, a week or so. He got it out. He made a copy of it. He had come to my house, interviewed me, and so forth. I said, Robin, I got one more thing for you. He says, Kreskin, it's a ninety minute show. We have three celebrities, and we devote a half hour. We have filled the time. What did you have in mind? I told him. He said, What did you say? I said, uh, I think I can do this. He says, Kreskin, you're, if it doesn't succeed. We'll edit it out. I said, Robin, please, I've known you for years. Give me your word of honor. If I fail, you've got to show it. I would hate to have it seen, but it's got to be seen. He says, I understand what you're saying. Can you imagine a few a week or so later, the police drive me into New York City, drive me to a hotel outside the hotel. There's around 18 or, or 15 police cars. Cindy Adams, who's a famous columnist who still works for the New York Post and wrote about this a year and a, a couple of years ago, saw me. 
met me and said, we've never met Kreskin. I'm not to speak to you anymore. You understand? I said, I understand, Cindy. We got in the back of the limousine, a stretch limousine, and I was to only speak to the driver who didn't know what the hell what the, out, the outlook was going to be. <laughs> and the situation was simply this. I had to find Robin Leach, and he was hiding, Rob, somewhere in the entire city of New York. Well, the police said it was the craziest thing they ever did. I'm having the guy down go down one way streets the wrong way because I'm getting impressions from her, <laughs> not what makes sense. We come to this old damn beat up building. Yeah. yeah. It looked like it should be condemned. I walked into the building to an elevator, slammed my fist in the door and walked out. She said, I know what to do. So finally I said, I meandered sheepishly and I said, Cindy, let's go. But this doesn't seem right. It went like to the eighth floor and it was a big building. We walked out, walked down a hallway, found a hidden elevator and went to the top. I said, now this makes sense. Open a door. It's a sports club, but it's closed because this is, this is early morning. And we walk and walk and come to a swimming pool, an Olympic-sized swimming pool. And, Rob, I stood there and looked at the pool for five minutes. Cindy later on wrote, I didn't know what to do. He's obviously not there, Rob. At least she'd know what was going on. I said, let's go to that door. And this is one of the stories that tells how the, my mind works. I said, I think that's the end of our route. We open the door. It's a large bar, but nobody's drinking. People are on the floor, cleaning the floor. They're moving glasses. It's morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I walk in this dim room, even though it's morning, but it's not well lit. Come up to a man who's draped over the bar. And I put my hand on his shoulders. And he slowly sits up and says, break out the champagne. <laughs> I had found Robin Leach in the city of New York in 48 minutes. Wow. And Cindy, Cindy Adams said, Robin, we're out there by, we're standing by a pool out there. He said, what did you say? I said, we're standing by a pool. And as she recounts, Robin Leach jumps up and says, get another damn bottle of champagne. It turns out when they radioed him and knew I was beginning my search, he changed his bathing suit and swam in the pool for 30 minutes, thinking it would be a dramatic place to be found. But finally got waterlogged, cleaned up, dressed, and moved into the bar. So the experiences I can recount behind the scenes are dramatic, Rob. Wow. Christian, we've got about three minutes, and, and I sincerely appreciate the time that you've taken out of your very busy schedule to join us. Say again, though, Rob. We're going to do it again sometime. You bet we are. And it, it, Sick. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Um, t tell me, Kreskin, what has been the strangest, strangest thing that has ever happened to you? Well, I've had... Many, many dramatic experiences, but I was in a place in, uh, in Nyack, New York, mm -hmm. house that was up for sale because it was supposedly haunted. I knew nothing about the house, and the lady I walked her through, I was going to buy the house. It I will tell you in the future what a great mistake that her son got greedy and, and turned people off on the house. Oh, no. But anyway, we walked through the house, and suddenly I ended up screaming, and I collapsed to the floor. And it turns out she started shaking violently because before she bought the house, the legend of the house was that a person had been murdered at exactly the place that I ended up lying on the floor. And I knew nothing about this kind of thing happening. When those things happen, mm -hmm. Rob, mm -hmm. I, I, I can offer no explanation any more than... Uh, some of the things that I have foreseen that look like fortune telling, but really are basically intuition. And I, we don't have that much time to even tell you one quick incident, I guess. But Martin was running for office in Canada, rerunning for office in 2006. I predicted his election on the air. They gave me uh, uh, on the morning show. They said, Chris, can you predicted this a month ago? And suddenly I said, if this government ever collapses, it'll, it'll be 18 months from now and he will never be elected again. And I backed off and said, what a stupid thing. I apologize. Guess what, Rob? My, my office got filled with 80-some phone calls. That was the man who the confidence vote collapsed and he lost his office. And I was off by five days. Wow. <clears throat> Kreskin, we've come to the end of this uh, this very short interview. We've it's it's been a great pleasure talking to you, Kreskin. I look forward to the next time when you and I can share 
these these stories and let people know who are listening and or who are watching that just because they have an experience that no one else has had doesn't mean it's not real. And if they talk about it, Rob, they will be surprised to know that others have felt the same way and not talking about it yeah. and suddenly realize they're not alone. Rob, in the spirit of broadcasting, I'm not going to say to you and the viewers and listeners, goodbye. Let's just say to be continued. To be continued. <laughs> Kresgen, thank you very much for joining us. Exo Nation, the amazing Kresgen has been my guest this very special edition of the Exxon. His website is www.theamazingkreskin.com and I will do everything I can in my power, Exxon Nation, to get the great, amazing Kreskin back on with us in the very near future, but you knew I was going to say that. <laughs> I'll be back on the other side of this news break at six and a half minutes past the top of the hour as the Exxon continues with yours truly, Rob McConnell from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't forget this website, TheAmazingKreskin.com Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, on the Exxon TV show, coming soon to screens of all sizes. On the Exxon TV show, we'll investigate UFOs, ghosts, alien abductions, demonic possession, psychic phenomenon, angels, lake monsters, Bigfoot, unsolved mysteries, and all subject matter from within the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology and much, much more. The Exxon TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, www.exxonetv.com. It's a Relmar McConnell Media Company and Airplay Media Production. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at songsandstoriesforsoldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. With each new extreme weather event or terrorist act, it becomes increasingly obvious that we live in uncertain and challenging times. We all buy car insurance. Why not collapse and catastrophe insurance? Matthew Stein, an MIT-trained engineer and green builder, has written two outstanding books to help people prepare, plan for, and deal with everything from minor situations lasting a few days to full-on collapse. Matt's first book, When Technology Fails, is a manual for self-reliance, sustainable living, and surviving the long emergency. This massive book covers the gamut from first aid and emergency preparedness to alternative healing, renewable energy, primitive living skills, and 18th century technologies that could be critical to your comfort and survival in a long-lasting crisis. Matt's second book, When Disaster Strikes, is a comprehensive emergency preparedness handbook and survival guide. When Disaster Strikes is an essential item for every family's go-bag, both books are available at all usual sources. There's a wealth of totally free information posted at whentechfails.com and author signed copies may be purchased at mattstein.com. That's www.whentechfails.com and www.mattstein.com. <laughs> 